Blessings of the divine upon you, good sir. My husband and I were just sitting down for a picnic under the sun. We haven't much to offer, but would you care to join us? Wonderful. Come, sit, sit. Oh, it's lovely to meet new people on the road. There you go, all cosy. So tell me, are you heading to Arks like we are? Nicholas and I wouldn't miss Lucian's day for the world. That's so, so lovely to hear. The more pilgrims pray for his return, the sooner Lucian will walk among us once more, just like the prophecy says. So come, let us break bread and strengthen ourselves for the journey. We have a sacred duty ahead of us in the holy city of Arx. You eat, drink, and have a good time of it with Glory and her husband, Nicholas. After the meal, you express your thanks and take your leave. Could be worse, you know. Hard to say how. You could be in more than that. Alexander the Innocent, Gather him up, I killed by sorcerers, a most vile incident. A valiant the spirit of a magister stares dumbly at her translucent hand, the fingers of which have been sheared off. My ring! Where's my ring? The spirit pivots her wrist, staring at the fingerless hand, utterly, morbidly entranced. I should have been more careful. She hacked at my sword hand first. I couldn't defend myself. The spirit stares, absorbing your question. Finally, she points her fingerless hand towards the kitchen. The spirit's lips part, trying to form an answer, but it doesn't come. She forlornly stares at you, unable to find the words. Mm -mm. Keep your eyes peeled, would you? Ramos the Wanderer promised he'd be here. The cook acknowledges you with a small bow, an oddly formal gesture given the surroundings. Please, sir, you should not be back here. It's not safe. A ghost? Peddle your children's tales elsewhere. I have work to do. What's this? I found something. Please, I must insist you keep out of my kitchens. It's not safe for you to wander about like this. They can inflict pain all the same. Please, I must insist that you leave. You should speak to Lovric if you want food. This ring, it bears the Magister's seal. And there's blood on it. Same as before, the spirit remains locked in a shocked trance. The ring! It was right here! On my finger! Something shakes the Magister's ghost from her stupor. Her gaze falls on the ring and brightens. My ring! Your words take a long moment to sink in, like they're being translated for the netherworld. Return it! Home to my brethren. 
The spirit smiles at you. If it weren't for the circumstances, it'd be almost heartwarming. He's here somewhere. I know it. I can smell him. Tell me, have you anything to report? The Magister's eyes narrow and her lip curls as she assesses you. It's vital that you report anything unusual. We must know. Is that clear? He arrived in Driftwood some days ago, dressed as a tinkerer. He bought and sold a few knickknacks. But we thought nothing of it until our brothers started vanishing. As soon as he knew we were onto him, he ran. We think he's hiding in here, but he's a canny one. Now, be on your way. Who knows where he could strike next? Heaven usher us to paradise against all the gods. Please, I must insist you keep out of my kitchens. It's not safe for you to wander about like this. She grabs the ring and glares at you, like a rattlesnake observing its next live meal. You should have just kept out of this. She gives you a defiant look. Magisters are obliged. They deserve worse than the death I gave them. I wouldn't taint the earth with their carcasses. Better that they vanish into unsuspecting stomachs. My secret would be far safer if I knew you could never talk again. There's a carving knife in her hand. You never even saw her pick it up. I have more work to do, more magisters to rid the world of. I can't leave any loose threads. She gives you a long look, unsure, then decides. Betray me and you'll meet the same fate as the others. Now go. A prim woman in a starched apron wipes a glass with a clean rag. She pins you with blue, steel-sharp eyes as you approach the bar. Blessings upon our Lucian, seven times divine. With surprising agility for a woman of her age, she reaches over the bar and swings a hand toward your face. You brace yourself for the incoming blow, but she instead points her finger into your face. We don't speak of His Holiness that way in this establishment. Well, you can't be blamed if your mother didn't teach you any better. But that can't be helped now, I suppose. Not everyone received the same education as my Niles. He's a magister mind, dead. So what are you after? We've only got amber ale, I'm afraid. Can't spare the potatoes for hard alcohol. If you'd like something that'll stick to your ribs, I'd flag down Loverick and get yourself a bowl of the house stew. Sure. An elf sways on her chair, her eyes focused on the counter in front of her, where she has six glasses in a row. With the nails of two fingers, she's pressing red welts into her forearm. She slides one of the drinks towards you, her head bobbling heavily on her neck as she nods at the sparkling ale. And that's... Drink or shut up. Mm. Nothing like a glass of the good stuff to smudge everything into a pretty shape. She slides another glass of ale toward you. Its contents sparkle in the dim bar light. Bottoms up. Mm. Cheers to you, me, and and. Her gaze swivels around the room. Damien's dull knife. This place is horrible. Never mind. Cheers to you, me, and me again. Another. Well, what do you mean? Ah, fat lot of good that I do me around here. All the Wolfies can't seem to catch and break in these parts. So, to the dwarves! 
Oops. Give me one good reason. Look. You don't need to do that. You don't need to... Look. Look. She shows you the two swollen, angry red welts on the underside of her arm. She slaps them without finesse, making herself wince, and stares at you intensely. I know how to make it better. I can fix it, all of it. I'll tell you. There's a... See, there's this woman. I'm not crazy. And if she kisses you, she can change you. She's downstairs. And, and, and now I'm different. It's in her lips. It's in the magic. I change the right way. And then, and then, I mean, I think now I'll be fine. You understand how, you know, sometimes you just want to be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You ought to go see her. Dorothea. She can help. Help. She can help you. She looks at you earnestly, her eyes gleaming, the twinkle of the amber ale behind them. I seem good, don't I? Yeah, I do. Hold it. Papa, no, no. You, no go. He grins, unpleasantly. Loha didn't tell me to let any walking scarecrow in, so why should I? Mm -hmm. It's already mad as a bag of cats down there, and I've no intention of flinging another major yowler in there. Scoot! Hey, back away from the stairs, or you'll find out exactly why they call me Papa Thrat. Might be your fault. You won't be walking. Spotted something. Look at that. A fresh face. And a pretty little kisser it is, too. If and Ben Mazd, as I live and breathe. I didn't think I'd see you back in Driftwood again. No, no, don't tell me. If I don't know the story, I won't have to lie about it later. She reaches out to pinch your cheek and gives you an exaggerated wink. So what's your poison, Governor? A sip or a smoke? Oi, so it is. But not just any Drudenay. Oh no. My own special blends. Further down's the arena, see? And the gladiators are always on the lookout for. An edge. I give them that edge. You could say that my darling herbs flower in the flesh and blossom in the brain. 
So, if you're interested, Governor, all you have to do is use your imagination. How can I make you bloom? No problem. In return for a reasonable donation, that is. Effie digs all kinds of outlandish herbs from out of the depths of many pockets and mixes them with the patience and skill of an alchemist. Much obliged, Governor. And here's your blend. Just take it to that big beauty of a pipe over there and have a blast. Smoke billows from this strange contraption. It's adorned with hoses, levers and slots. Seven protect me. <laughs> Seven save me. This leaf is strong. My good sir, I see that you accompany no other than His Royal Majesty, the Red Prince. I have a message for him of quite vital importance. If you'd be so kind. Of course he'll be so kind. Speak freely, kinsman. Directions, my lord. I was bid to send you to none other than Bramos the Wanderer. He was waiting for you here, my prince. But... but... He looks around the hazy room with hasted eyes. The House of Shadows stirs. The Honorable Bramos sensed them closing in. He had no choice but to flee from Driftwood. A little ways east he went, in search of safety, to an encampment of paladins. You will find him there, Majesty. And with the Prince of Princes, I am humbled and grateful. He bows deeply before the Red Prince, as reverently as one would before a god. The House of Shadows stirs. An ominous phrase. It's as if I can feel the onset of night. Perhaps. But you must realize that until a short while ago, the very existence of the House of Shadows was a mystery to us. If this thing of darkness steps into the light, it must be desperate. And desperate means dangerous. You still stand by me, then, despite us being targeted by such a formidable foe? That is quite admirable, I must say. Onward, then. Let them strike when they may. We shall be ready for them. Hail. Such a striking man. She draws close. You feel her breath on your neck, hot, moist. Mmm. Oh, yes. I have something that you want, but I only bargain with those I deem deserving, those who have accomplished great things. So tell me, are you worthy of my gift? Handsome, I must consider your merits before I answer your questions. Why, I wouldn't tease you with a gift I could never offer. You don't think me cruel, do you? If you swam your way here, I might consider that a notable triumph. But honey, I know you didn't swim. You'll have to give me something more impressive than that. Surely you've accomplished something of note. Indeed. Hmm. This is acceptable. You are nearer the one than most self-described heroes I've known. So, tell me... Are you ready for me to grant you your greatest desire? I can't. Not yet. First, you must look into my ring and tell me what you see there. Gaze into the gem, handsome one. She flashes her ring at you, and you stare at the luminescent stone at its center. 
you are floating on a current of pure source, surrounded by a kaleidoscope of colors and fuzzy images. On the horizon looms a dark silhouette. As you approach, a beam of light washes the shadow away, revealing to you... Mmm, yes. I see you clearly now. Mmm, it is power you seek. To conjure maelstroms and command the light to drive away shadow. I will fulfill this desire. In return, I ask for one thing in return. A kiss. Dorothea sighs. A fusion of a kitten's purr and a cockroach's clacking. Ah, <sighs> For me to help you, our souls must touch. And a kiss brings our souls closer, does it not? It shall fulfill both your desire and mine. Most delicious. Meet me around the corner and come alone. An audience is not required. Are you? Are you? No, you aren't. Please, could you help me? Bugger off. Can't you see I'm trying to relax? She looks you up and down with a grimace. What's it look like? Nope. Yep. It's already in my pipe. Nothing left for you. Sorry. Her lips pout, but otherwise her face is steel. I waited, yet you never appeared. I hope you have not changed your mind. I am most keen to satisfy you. As you wish, I will await you. Come alone.
Dorothea sees you and heaves a shuddering sigh. She bites into her lower lip with enough force that a drop of blood seeps out. Blood and something else, something green. Darling, I admit I wish we could share more carnal pleasures. Yet I think a kiss is the height of intimacy. Now come closer and receive your soul's desire. You draw closer and close your eyes, eager to feel her lips on yours. Yet her lips do not press against yours, and her hands do not caress your face. She is a woman no longer, but a were-spider. Her fang painlessly sinks into your neck. You still hear her words, though they sound muffled, as if filtered through a glass wall. You desired power, and so it's yours. My venom seeps into every pore. We part ways now. I'll remember this moment. You've seen my true self. There's nothing more to know. She kisses her forefinger, then presses it against your forehead. Now go. What do you want? Boss is busy. Good. Boss could use some good news. Listen up. Don't waste his time. These are explosive times. Be respectful. I brought you up from girl to woman, Marla. Like you was my own. This. He lifts his right arm, showing a white bandage beneath his ribs. A wet red spot shows through. This ain't the thanks I expected. Who sent you? <laughs> the formidable dwarf slams his fist on the side table. You hear a loud crack. Enough! Do you know they killed Anhar? Do ya? Start talking sense or I'll take that tongue right out of your mouth and fry it for supper. Bart! Kate! Get her to talk or bleed her out. She ain't one of mine anymore. His sneer travels from the restrained dwarf to you. And you. You better have a damn good reason for coming here. We ain't gonna keep you around much longer. Brave lad. All sitting here now. I hope for your sake you've got good news for me. Me? She alive. I'm impressed. Magister Who's it laid into her pretty hard. You one of her little seekers? Chasing down Godwoken and begging them to save us all? That's so. He leans back and narrows his eyes, looking you up and down. You know, the order's been going on about Godwoken for an eon now. Voidwoken's still lurking, though, and they're still all in folks off to the joy. So if you are who you say you are, what's the point of you? Ah. I should have guessed. I could help you. But last I heard you was working for the Magisters. Big shots at the boats. Now, why in the name of all the Earths would I help a worm like that? An unpleasant smirk twitches around the corners of his mouth. Right. I reckon I could help you out. Depending on what you can do for me. He gestures towards the bandage across his side. Had a bit of family trouble lately. My girl Marla got it in her head to come after me with a short blade. That ain't like Marla. Ain't like her to pull the silent treatment either. Something's going on. And wouldn't you know it, that blade she used wasn't any normal bit of steel. Belonged to another of my people. Guy's name is Mordus. Bit of a loner, but smart as hell. I sent a few guys to go check on him. See if he knew what had got into Marla, but no one can find him. I'd like a word with the guy. Glad you see it that way. No one's seen him in a good few. I've got some people checking out his house near the tavern now, though. Tell them I sent you, and they'll let you know what they've found. Truth is, they might be glad to see you. Reckon a sorcerer will have better luck finding one of their own. 
Well, like I said, Mordus is a special guy. A sorcerer, matter of fact. Maybe even one of the ones Seavers after. If there's something you want to find out from him, you might want to ask before I have my word with him. Here, you can take this off my hands. More suited to your kind, really. Good luck. The battered dwarf pulls her lips back into a garish, open-mouthed grin, flashing blood-stained teeth 